Hi guys, this is Dimitar Krstev Jimmy from Chaos Group and I have some great news. We have just released the official version of V-Ray for Softimage and I have created a bunch of small videos to showcase some of the cool features that we have in it. Before that however, I want to just show you where you can find the settings of V-Ray and just give you a brief overview of what they're about. So uh, I have opened Softimage and uh, the first obvious thing to do is to select uh, V-Ray as a rendering engine, so let's do that. Okay, so V-Ray is obviously my uh, scene renderer, so let's now check its settings. As you can see, uh, we have a bunch of settings here, and the first thing uh, that I want to talk about is this output tab. Now obviously in here we set uh, the, the, where we're going to save the uh, rendered out image and so on and so forth, but the interesting thing here is this uh, use V-Ray VFB. So if I just render out um, one frame, you'll see that we are rendering actually in this V-Ray frame buffer. And the frame buffer is pretty cool because actually it gives us a lot of uh, things to do. First of all, it keeps the image in this 32-bit floating point format, which means that the image is kept in this high dynamic range, uh, which in case when we have bright uh, sources of light, we can apply color corrections and different um, lookup tables and so on to these unclumped colors, which is extremely powerful way of applying color corrections because uh, we have much more color data to work with. Uh, furthermore, if we're rendering uh, with a bunch of render elements, we'll be able to see all the different render elements here in this uh, drop-down menu. We can also save our images from here, we can render small regions, and we can do A-B comparison. And another cool thing is that we can directly link our rendered image to PD Player, so whatever we rendered in our V-Ray frame buffer, we will be able to see directly into PD Player and uh, work with it. We can apply again color corrections, different hookup tables, and so on and so forth. So it's a basic thing, but it's uh, really, really powerful. Next on the list, we have the options for the global illumination, where we can enable and disable the global illumination. And you'll see that we have uh, primary and secondary bounces. Here is where we can actually combine different, uh, uh, rendering uh, different uh, GI engines and uh, use them in different combinations based on the specific uh, scene that we're rendering. This is a very powerful approach, which allows us to be very flexible when rendering um, our animation centers. Uh, still images with uh, global illumination in different uh, scenarios. Uh, next on the list we have the image sample or anti-aliasing. Uh, in the settings uh, here we can control um, the final quality of the image and of course uh, the render time. So here we control the ratio between render times and quality and this uh, sample here works uh, together with the DMC sample which basically controls all the sampling that the V-Ray is going to be uh, doing. Next we have uh, the different uh, uh, GI methods that we're going to be using here. So whatever we have selected uh, here, so if we select light cache, light cache will be active here. And once again, they hold the settings um, uh, for each of the rendering engine. And based on what you have selected here and based on the specific uh, situation that you're trying to render out, uh, you'll use different uh, methods. Next we have some camera overrides. Uh, they allow us basically to override the the standard the camera that we're using right now so we can turn it for example to box camera or fisheye camera we can also override the field of view and uh, overall change uh, the camera that we're rendering through additionally we have this depth of field options which actually allow us to uh, when we enable the depth of field we can create this uh, physically based depth of field which is however is uh, overriding the depth of field that is coming from the actual camera uh, Next to the camera we have the motion blur and once again we can just enable it and uh, control the amount of motion blur and the quality of the motion blur with these settings here. After that we have the color mapping tab. Uh, the color mapping tab basically allows us to uh, apply different color mapping modes to our rendered out image. Uh, as I said V-Ray uh, works in this 32-bit uh, floating point on this high dynamic range of colors, the ones that we're seeing here in the V-Ray frame buffer. So um, in order to display this color in a monitor which is not able to display the full uh, dynamic range, we need to apply some color mapping. And in here we can actually control the different uh, color mapping modes and we can use different multipliers to make our image brighter or darker and control the final look of the image. Next we have the options for the caustics. So if we want to create uh, photon map caustics, we're going to have to enable those from here. And then we can control the strength of the caustics and their quality 
and so on and so forth. The next step is the default displacement, which basically allows us to override uh, the soft image displacement and control all the displacement that's going on in our scene globally and control the quality of the displacement and the amount, which is again pretty straightforward. The system tab holds some um, more uh, specific system specific options, like for example the Raycaster parameters, which I advise you not to touch at least in the beginning. Uh, the interesting thing here is this uh, render region subdivision. So uh, V-Ray renders out the image in small render regions or buckets and you can control the size of this bucket. So if you have uh, many cores, you can actually decrease uh, the bucket size so you get a better um, utilization of your cores. Finally, we have the global switches. Uh, these options are very useful, especially when we have some troubles with the final image. They allow us to... Um, globally control and turn off and turn on things like the displacement or the lights or the shadows so in cases when we have um, some problems in the final image and we're not sure what's causing the issue we can use those options here um, to globally switch off things and debug the final image now these are the important things here in the V-Ray options now let's see where else you can uh, find very specific things I'm going to start with the file menu and uh, here in the import and export you'll see that we have this export to V-Ray Mesh and also import V-Ray Mesh. So the export to V-Ray Mesh basically allows us to select a geometry or a bunch of different geometries and then export them to a V-Ray uh, Mesh file. The V-Ray Mesh file is um, a specific file of a format which uh, saves the geometry on our hard drive and then uh, this geometry is displaced in our is, um, displayed in our scene as a V-Ray proxy. So uh, this allows us to basically have millions and millions of polygons which are stored on the hard drive and we just see a small uh, preview or we see a um, low polygonal preview in our viewport so it can work in the viewport and we can also render millions and millions of polygons without having to use uh, too much RAM. It's basically an optimization in terms of memory. So you can export any geometry to a V-Ray Mesh or if you have the V-Ray Mesh created somewhere else, which is also possible, you can import the V-Ray Mesh uh, with this option here. Now, uh, let's start with the get stuff here. So if we check out the primitives, the first thing that we have here is in the surface, we have this V-Ray plane. And it's a very simple thing. It is a procedural geometry, just an infinite plane that uh, is stretched as far as you can see. So it, if you need to uh, render something like that, you don't have to uh, just have a very huge uh, surface here, you can use the V-Ray plane instead. Next we have the V-Ray physical camera and it is our specific uh, uh, camera uh, lens or lens shader which allows us to uh, perfectly simulate a real world camera so uh, you can simulate things like um, Venetic for example and uh, the uh, the, ex the final exposure will be affected by the aperture size here in the F number and um, uh, for example the shutter speed and the film is so also you can create physically based uh, depth of field and um, uh, motion blur. This is a really powerful tool it can be used in many cases and actually I'm going to talk about this uh, with more detail in a separate video. We also have a bunch of lights uh, the very light which is uh, our uh, standard uh, very light that uh, you can use to illuminate your scenes and there we have some interesting options which I'm going to talk once again in a separate video about lighting. Uh, we have the V-Ray Sun which is a part of our Sun and Sky system uh, which allows us to create daylight illumination very easily and this will, I'm going to talk about this one in the same video that I'm talking about the physical camera and finally over here we have the V-Ray IS light which basically allows us to load light uh, profiles, IS files, and render those into soft image. Next, you see that uh, in the materials uh, tab, we have a bunch of different materials. So uh, we always advise people to use uh, the V-Ray materials when rendering with V-Ray because they're optimized to work with V-Ray. And uh, I will uh, have a separate video about the V-Ray materials, uh, the most important ones on our YouTube channel. So you can check those out. But uh, you will see that using V-Ray materials you can pretty much create any result that you may ever need. Then we have some properties. Uh, we have the V-Ray displacement property which uh, we can apply on separate objects and create the displacement per object and we can create some pretty cool effects. Uh, I'm going to show this in another video. 
we have the VRA mesh light, which is again very, very useful. It basically allows us to create direct lights out of uh, any mesh, which is pretty useful sometimes. And we have the VRA object uh, property, which allows us to give uh, unique IDs to objects so we can later extract them on separate render elements. In the shader category, uh, we have a bunch of uh, volume shaders, uh, starting from very simple volumetric shaders, which uh, uh, cannot create, for example, cannot simulate global illumination and moving on to more complex ones, which can be textured and you can uh, trace GI through them and create really, really complex effects. Another one that we have here is the V-Ray Tune and it's a pretty cool environmental effect which uh, you when you place it in the environment you can actually uh, create cartoon-like images. In the textures, if I go to the More uh, button and uh, select the V-Ray Path, you'll see that we have a bunch of uh, V-Ray procedural textures and I'm just going to give you a few words about each of them and uh, what are those about. Uh, for example, the V-Ray Dirt is a procedural texture which creates an ambient occlusion pass. Uh, the V-Ray Edges texture uh, is a, again a procedural texture which allows us to outline the edges of a, of a mesh. The V-Ray Environment image allows us to load an, environment, uh, an image in the environment and properly map it. So uh, use diff different kinds of metrics, for example spherical or uh, mirror ball or whatever. Uh, the Freno texture is pretty useful. It allows us to um, blend two colors based on a Fresnel curve and based on an index of refraction. The V-Ray Hair Sample Info Texture is going to be again very useful when you're shading uh, uh, furry characters and if you want to sh create uh, shaders that are changing along uh, the length of the hair strands, uh, this texture is going to be pretty useful. And finally we have the V-Ray P-Tex which, uh, which allows us to load P-Textures into soft image and uh, those are actually pretty cool because uh, you don't have to uh, use UV unwrapping when you're using P textures. Uh, so these are the uh, get things here. And finally, I'm going to go to the pass options. And here we have this uh, edit current pass. So if I go to the pass shaders, you'll see that we have a bunch of uh, different things here. First of all, in the environment, I can use the very environment shader. And uh, it allows us to overwrite the environment and have uh, different images or colors when we're tracing just the background or when we're tracing global illumination and reflections and refractions. This basically means that I can have one image in the background and then uh, when the GI rays are hitting the environment they'll see another image or another color and I, want, I can have different environment being reflected or refracted by my objects which is uh, pretty useful. Also another thing that I can add here is the V-Ray Sky. And as you see, when I try to add it, it will ask me if I want to create the V-Ray Sun uh, automatically. So the V-Ray Sun and the V-Ray Sky, they work together. The V-Ray Sun is a direct light, which we can use uh, to illuminate the scene. And then the sky is a procedural texture that based on the where the sun is in uh, the, on the sky, it will change the color of the sun, of the sky. So if the sun is very low near the horizon, the, the sky will be more orange and the color from the sun will be also more orange. It will look like a um, sunset or sunrise and if it's on top of uh, everything it will look like it's uh, noon and the sky will be very blue and the sun will be uh, much brighter. So basically a daylight uh, system that we have in uh, with V-Ray. Uh, in the output here you'll see that we have a bunch of different uh, very specific render elements and those can be very useful. You can extract uh, separate parts of your image, for example, just the reflections or the refractions, just the diffuse, just the GI. Uh, you can also extract uh, objects or s materials and uh, compose those um, in any compositing software, which uh, later will be very useful because you have much more control over the final uh, look of the image when you uh, compose those and apply different color corrections to the different uh, render elements. Finally, we have this uh, volume and uh, you can use those uh, shaders that I was talking about. You can add different uh, fox, mists or uh, for example clouds in the environment and uh, you can also use the V-Ray tune and uh, turn the whole uh, scene uh, into a cartoon-like image. So um, these are the basic settings. Uh, once again, this was just a quick overview, I didn't go into much detail because uh, in our YouTube channel you should see that we have uh, uh, feature specific videos that I have created 
And this was just uh, so that you can get to know uh, Vire and you can you can know where to look for it. So uh, I hope this was useful for you. I'm Dimitar Krstev Jimmy, and I thank you for watching.